Hi, this is David Bagno, and welcome to my demo of Musical Space Invaders. And the purpose of this demo is to highlight some of the features and go through the user interface so you yourself can get the most out of this program. Okay, before starting, I just want to introduce you to the bottom here, these blue arrows, if you could see them. These are the note range sliders. Here's what how you adjust the note range. Very important. Now, a beginner student would start off with just a couple of notes. And my philosophy always was, as they learn the new notes, add another note. As they learn the new notes, add another note. And the purpose of this is for memorization. The notes really have to be memorized. Not only where they are on the piano, but on the staff and also where they are on the keyboard so there's a lot to learn and I've always found the biggest problem with teaching music it's there's too much to learn and it confuses the students so musical space invaders strips that all away and reduces it to very small building blocks of learning sometimes I'll get comments from people and they say why there's there no rhythm or why don't you have eighth notes just wanted to put it out there that every aspect of rhythm has been stripped from this program. That's a different layer, and I purposely do not introduce it in this program. You can uh, find the, the layers of rhythm introduced in my sight reading studio program and also my uh, rhythm teacher program. Again, no rhythm in this program. All the notes are half notes. So with that in mind, let's begin to play. As you see the notes come across the screen, my job is to shoot the note down. I'm shooting the notes down via the MIDI keyboard. Now over here you notice each time a note is played, it's highlighting on the keyboard. This is a feature for the beginner. I kind of consider it show and tell, and it's showing them where the note is on the keyboard. This could be turned off. And here I turned it off. But when you first start, I would recommend leaving it on until the, the new notes are learnt. So as we learn the new notes, we can increase the range. So now I'm going from C to almost an octave. Right now the note speed is relatively slow. I'm going to adjust the note speed to make it faster. Now of course, this is too fast for a beginner. I can also use the plus and minus keys on the key bed to slow the speed. So I'm going to tweak it and find a comfortable rate for the student. See, it's getting slower and slower. I'm just hitting the minus key. Okay, so, currently the notes, the direction is set from left to right. We could also change the direction from right to left. And this idea of changing the direction is very important because it teaches the student to look ahead, to look ahead and anticipate the music that he's reading from the book. So let's start the game again. And now the notes are coming out of the left. And you notice I'm shooting them down from the left. That's a mistake, see? And if I'm fast enough, I could also use my mouse. Now the purpose of using the mouse, you might be practicing in a school or in a lab where there aren't MIDI keyboards, and you still would like to uh, do time learning the notes. All right, let's pause this. I often tell people I think of Musical Space Invaders as uh, an air flight simulator. I imagine something that pilots train on to get good at flying. Well, Musical Space Invaders is a piano playing simulator and a lot is going on. 
like I said, we really want to memorize the notes. We want to know where they are on the staff. That's one aspect. We want to know where they are on the keyboard, but we also want to know what they feel like. So because so much is going on in Musical Space Invaders, if the student is looking at the screen, they cannot also be looking at their hands at the same time. So this forces them to learn where the notes are on the piano. And you'll be surprised, your hands will actually memorize where the notes are. So as you get better and better, the student would subconsciously move the hand to the right or to the left and be able to pick off notes. So they'll learn what the note feels like, what it sounds like, where it is on the piano. These are all very important things to improve in note playing. Now, some of you might be saying, oh, this is very basic. All the music programs do this. So let me just show you some more features that are hidden in Musical Space Invaders. So we're going to stop the game. We have to stop the game to change some major settings. So this situation, we're going to change it. So we have from left to right, right to left, flashcards. Very important, go into flashcard mode. Uh, missiles on, missiles off. Ledgers on, ledgers off. Ledgers are very important, and I'll go into that in a minute. We also have uh, options with the note types. So usually, and for the longest time, I only want to teach students single notes, but for more advanced students who have know the notes, they can now learn intervals or chords. So I turn my note types on to chords. Let's see what it looks like. Oops. Okay, so you just saw me demonstrate chords. That's a very powerful feature. And like I said, the, uh, the note combinations are pretty much infinite, so that's a lot of versatility introduced to the program by having the option to pick the type of notes. So rem remember, we're talking about learning notes on the piano. Where is a C on the piano? Where is an octave above C on a piano? So the student has enough to deal with with just concentrating on a single note. That's why only later do we introduce thirds and chords because now we're teaching them to look at two notes simultaneously and read vertically up and down. So there's a lot of layers to learning and Musical Space Invaders lets you turn those layers on and off to get the most out of your learning experience. So we're going to turn them off and, and go back to the usual methods. Now we're going to go over to the clef tool. Right now I'm in treble clef only mode and I might want to do this and I do do this for several weeks of lessons until you know at least two octaves of the middle of the treble clef is learnt. Now I might use bass clef only mode if I was teaching a student a bass clef instrument. Or I might use treble clef only mode if I was learning to play the guitar and I was only interested in treble clef. Again, bass or treble clef is randomly going to pick notes from the bass or treble clef. Treble clef only will only pick notes from the treble clef. Bass clef only the bass clef. And bass and treble clef will be bass and treble clef simultaneously, more like playing the piano. So using the right clef is very important and uh, I'll demonstrate some of the advantages. Why would I want to use treble clef only? We might learn from practicing the notes or doing the program that the student is very weak in the upper register. So we're going to adjust the sliders and zoom in on the upper treble clef notes to really zero in and concentrate on them until the student has mastered them. So you see the selection is only 
the upper ledger notes. Very important. We might also want to duplicate this with the bass clef. A lot of times students are very weak in the lower bass clef. Up, oh, I got a restraint there, so let me change my mode and go to bass clef only. And I'm going to concentrate on these really lower bass clef notes. Very important. So, Musical Space Invaders does afford a great range. The whole range of the piano, actually. So, let's continue with our demo and get on to another feature. Ledgers. Ledgers. What are the ledgers? In the beginning, we might be teaching students notes around... G of the bass clef to the first G in the treble clef. And a lot of these notes can appear in both the bass and treble clef. Uh, in the beginning, this is very hard to learn, and we, we don't want to do ledgers, but eventually we have to face them. And Musical Space Invaders has a convenient ledger tool. So we're going to be in bass or treble clef mode, and I'm going to say I want to practice or see the ledgers between lower G and the first C, the first G. So let's see what that looks like. Notice how E and C are favoring ledger notes rather than being on the staff. Again, an E on the ledger. Now, very important, like I said, Musical Space Invaders turns the layers on or off so that you can concentrate on specific areas of learning. So, Ledgers is a more advanced feature, and we would put that off for several months and not even introduce it. But you can see there's a long range of ledgers here. Let's just preview this for a second and see what it looks like. And I'm just going to increase the note speed give you an idea. And let's see how complicated it is when we start introducing chords. So we're going to do thirds and triads. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so you can see there's so much versatility in this program. And I often tell people that you can go to the house and introduce this to a brand new student that's never played the piano before, or you could be accomplished concert piano yourself and open Musical Space Invaders to include, include all the features that you yourself will improve your sight reading and increase your agility because the computer will play the notes so fast and so randomly it's really an effort to keep up with it, but it's a lot of fun, and uh, that's what's great about this program is the fun factor. So let's continue our little demo here, and now we're going to go to keys. So far I've been in the key of C because it's the easiest key. The next key is the key of G, and I've organized the key menu. It goes from easiest to more difficult. We can go to the key of G. we can go to the key of D and increase the range key of A key of C sharp major so here we have all these sharps again an advanced feature we do not want to introduce this to a beginner this is for somebody who's already accomplished who wants to improve their sight reading Let's 
change the direction a little bit. Let's go to left to right. And I'm also going to really open up the range, give you guys an appreciation for how difficult the environment can be. Increase the speed. So if anyone's out there that, that thinks they're going to master this program, they're not because, like I say, the combinations and versatility of the program is quite advanced. All right. I've just paused the game by hitting the space key on the piano. So let's go over a couple of other features and then we'll uh, close out this session. Uh, MIDI in, as you can see, I'm using a MIDI, an M box, and that's how I'm connected to my keyboard. MIDI out, I'm connected to a sine, Steinway uh, sound module from Garatino Steinway. I have MIDI through, MIDI through is off, and I have my global setup, and here's where I can really dig down and set up all the features notes per game to keep it interesting we might say you know alright the game is over when you have um, a thousand notes that's a lot of practicing for kids and then shots to shoot how many shots are we going to allow what this does is make the game more or less interesting because if they have a thousand notes and they have to shoot it down in a thousand uh, you know the game's going to be very difficult but you know usually give them three to one or four to one which allows them to make mistakes and here's the MIDI volume how loud the keys are gonna play and game threshold this is students may be practicing and they may not be interested in saving the score but this sets the threshold at which point the game will be saved uh, I've gone through this single notes thirds triads in a ledges, here's where we set up the ledgers. In the beginning, it would be off. Route all sounds through note player. You can also simultaneously play this through your onboard. Uh, I'm using the Mac right now through QuickTime or turn it off. Right now, we're using a MIDI synth synthesizer, so it's turned off. Okay, we also have logs, and uh, this will keep track of each player's time logged on the game, the air score, their no score, the key they were in, their percent complete of the game, the actual score, how many times. Again, this is to make it exciting, and also to give teachers in a classroom situation a chance to monitor what's going on. You can also export the grades or save them or view previously previous logs. We also have a full screen toggle here if you want to cover the entire screen so that uh, the background is invisible. Uh, you will, probably won't see it on this video but I'll click it on for a second. There it is, it's clicked on and I'll click it off. Sound effects. For you older students or uh, accomplished pianists, the sound effects might be a little cheesy or uh, you know silly to you. Just turn them off. That'll turn it off. Missiles. You might want to turn them off. Turn them on. I think it's really neat to have them on. It's a lot of fun for the kids. Uh, you can personalize the game and change the player. Add new players. Here I'm the only player. But if you have multiple students, you can add them. And uh, let's go to the bottom of the screen, which I know on this YouTube video is not really going to be viewable. The length of the game, I'm adjusting how many shots the length of the game will be. I mean, how long the game will last. How many shots I have until the game will expire. So that's about it. That's uh, 
Musical Space Invaders 2013. I hope that you've watched this video and that it will help you to find all the treasures in this program and, and teach you the tools within the program so that you can get the most out of it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to post a blog to me or email me at dbagno at mac.com. Well, have a good day. We're signing off. Bye-bye.